My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from Book of Isaiah, Chapter 60. Book of Isaiah, Chapter 60. And the theme of our contemplation is, I will make it. I will make it. Let's go into prayer. Loving Father, I, your word is seven, stand before your throne to thank you for being our God. We have gathered to praise you and worship you, for you never fail. Father, we glorify you, we give you thanks, we praise you tonight, for you have reassured us that we're going to make it. It is with your blessed assurance that we stand firm. It is with your blessed assurance that we have stronger faith. You told us not to be afraid, for the spirit you have given us is not the spirit of timidity. We stand on your blessed assurance because you have empowered us. You have empowered us to see meaning even when things are meaningless. You reassure us of hope, even when we think that things are not moving our own way. Heavenly Father, continue to bless your children that have, that have gathered this night with faith. So many of them are still in their area of work. Some are just coming back. Some are in their various families. Instead of relaxing and resting, they turn in to worship and adore you. Like the deer that yearns for running stream, even so our God is pulling us in love to come to him. Our soul is yearning and craving for you, the living God. Father, whatever be the situation in our life, we have strong faith in you. With you, we can move mountains. We fear everything is possible. Father, we present before you our trouble for the day, our trouble for the week, our trouble for this month. For many years, many are struggling. Many people are really, really struggling in many ways. Some don't even have the mouth to talk about it. Some are tired of mentioning their intentions. But we believe in your word in Matthew 7, 7 that you told us to ask. We we'll keep on asking and we shall receive, to continue to seek, and we shall find, and to continue to knock at your door for open doors, and we believe that we shall receive. We believe that the door will open. Open the door of healing for the sick, Father. The sick will make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Our young ones that are struggling with their business will make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Many people that are still not getting their exams, they have taken many exams and they are still failing. They will make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, your children have gathered to continue to knock at your door with faith. We assure them of your blessed assurance. We assure them of your divine arrangements. We know that you are with us and we're going to make it. In spite of our unworthiness, Father, you are still with us. Father, continue to bless us tonight. Bless our endeavor. Bless our sweat. Our sweat shall never be in vain. I raise my hands of blessing upon each and every one of you struggling at this hour. 
Some are struggling with their mortgage. They can't even pay their mortgage. Some are looking at the, the staggering uh, uh, prices. Their mortgage. Their light bill, their water bill, their heater bill, climbing every day. Some don't have a job. Some are sick. And they have not gone back to work. Some were tired without even preparing for retirement because of their sickness. Abba Father, arrest the situation in those families, Father. It's not easy for them. So many people are running temperature. The sick are afraid, afraid that they will not make it. Assure them tonight that they will make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God, look at yourself. Look back and see how many people that you've known for many years and you no longer see them today. It's not because of your power. It's not because of your holiness of life that you are still standing giddy bomb. It's not because of your righteousness that you are still alive. It's because of divine mercy. It's because of divine benevolence. You have something to hold on to and say thank you, Jesus. You have something to hold on to. Many are still standing their ground because of the grace of God. Father, many countries are struggling. Many nations are at war. Because of you, we are breathing today. It is because of you that we have not given up. It is because of you that the poor have not given up in spite of the hardship in the country. Many have lost their lives because of injustice in the land. Many are still standing their ground because of your grace. So many people are suffering, but they have hope. So we are beaten, but they are still alive in the Lord. Our the Father. Send forth your Holy Spirit to rekindle the fire of success in them. Rekindle the fire of prosperity. Rekindle the fire of good jobs for them. Job opportunities and change of status. Let your grace sustain the sick among us, Father. Many people are suffering from cancer. Many have seen tumors in their bodies. And they are scared what it will be. Father, let it be denied in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, numb every cancer cell in the body in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, liberate your people from captivity in the mighty name of Jesus. Many have seen their sickness as death sentence. Devil is a liar. Abba, Father, I pray for your divine intervention. I pray for your divine arrangement for your people that are suffering, especially many Christians in many places. Many Christians have been persecuted. So many of them are imprisoned. So many of them are incarcerated. They have never seen their loved ones for years. Father, bless Marjan Danikano. Freedom of conscience speaking on behalf of his own people. Look at what is going on in their country. Whatever he had said is happening. The youths are suffering. Many are incarcerated because of their freedom. Their freedom is in, is, is in shambles. Father, it is only you that will grant freedom to the poor masses. By your grace, you shall be alive to see tomorrow. You gave America liberty. You gave them freedom, freedom of speech. So many countries cannot talk. So many people cannot even protest for their rights. 
and they are killed for saying the truth. They are killed for protesting. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, let your spirit continue to sustain those families, those countries and nations. They're going to make it. They will make it every day in the mighty name of Jesus. It is because of you we shall see tomorrow. Bless many of our youths that are imprisoned. Their future are caged. Father, it's not easy for them. Some were killed, some wounded, and are still in prison. Father, sustain their hope that they will make it alive in Jesus' name. Father, extend your divine mercy upon our families tonight. Many families are still struggling. They are afraid of what their children will be tomorrow. No job for some youth after their studies in many countries. They are struggling. They are really struggling harder. Let tonight be a night of blessing for them. As we are interceding for them in prayer, Father, let your your will be done. I know that you have good intention for us. You told us in, in Jeremiah 29, 11, that you have a good plan for us, plan to prosper us. We believe your words in the scripture. We believe your words in the scripture. We are never tired of listening to your word. We are never tired of listening to your word. We have come to draw strength from you, Father. We have gathered once again to draw strength from you. Let your spirit continue to fortify our banner. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Child of God, how are you tonight? Tell your brother, tell your sister, I will make it. There was a, a child of God that was um, struggling with uh, his exam. He, has, uh, he took jam for almost five times on third. And he said, he will make it. He will make it. He will make it. <clears throat> and one day my phone rang. Told me, Father, I, wanna, I want to make it for my jam. I really want to study medicine. He has been looking for an opportunity to study medicine. I said, why not try, why not you put pharmacy? He said, no, Father, medicine, medicine, medicine. I said, well, just put pharmacy. Put pharmacy. When you, when you go there, you can switch over. And then in the fifth one, he put pharmacy. And his cut of mark came up. He says, Father, thank you. And now he's a medical doctor. You know, sometimes uh, we behave like Peter. You're a fisherman. You fish all night. You fish all day. When the time comes, when the time comes for your breakthrough to come, God will show you who to talk to. God will show you. God will direct you who to talk to you. Look at Peter. Peter lost hope. It was a fisherman. It was a fisherman all the night. He was trying to catch catch fish or fishes. He couldn't even get shrimp or even crayfish. He was a fisherman. He went for night vigil to fish and couldn't get even shrimp or crayfish. He came back disappointed, only to meet Jesus at the riverbank. God has sense of humor. God has sense of humor. Peter did not know that God will meet him at the riverbank. Peter did not know that God will use his own uh, boat to evangelize. When God is using any of your property or even your family as a resting place, you don't even know that blessing will come there. When I came to America for the first time in 2004, 
I do not have job. I came as a student. And one of my parishioners from home that were here, uh, they were looking for the fruit of the womb. And this husband and wife said, Oh, Father, I come. We can, we can manage. And uh, the husband and wife, they shared one room, and they gave me the room of their of the wife. And they said, oh, what's going on? You have, you have not taken in. He said, Father, look at us. So I said, God will provide you. They say, Amen. No. Every night we pray before we go to bed. Every night we pray. And I go to, I go to school at Fordham University before I eventually got a, a place uh, with a capuchin flower. I was in their, in, their, in their family. That was my first port of entry. When you don't know anybody in any country you are going, you suffer. But as God might have it, that time I was able to have their address and, and phone from home. They were happy to, to allow me to be, uh, uh, to have a room on board in their family. And I said, God, when I, when I eventually enter with the Capuchin for in Bronx, it's gone here old. God bless Father John. He's now dead. I told her, I told God, silver and gold I, I don't have. I haven't even started going to work. I don't have a work authorization. I was just a, a student. I said, I pray for this family. Give them fruit of the womb. And today they have one son. They have one son. They say, Father, you are coming to our family. Give us something that was tangible. Sometimes you think that you will not make it. And you see God walking in your way. God can use somebody to walk into your family and you have a divine breakthrough. God can use somebody to make it happen for you. Just like this young man that was looking for uh, medicine in his jam. I told him, why, why can't you try pharmacy? And the fifth time, God answered his prayer. And he had a breakthrough. Now he's a medical doctor. Peter did not even know that he would meet Jesus at the river bank. He was toiling night and day, trying to catch fishes. He knew where he would go. I will be able to catch a lot of fishes. But he did not succeed. Till the opportune time came. And Jesus stepped into his boat. And he made it. If he was an angry man and then uh, uh, tired for, uh, for uh, looking for fish the whole night. And Jesus said, can I make use of your boat? He said, no, I'm going home. I want to carry my boat home. He wouldn't have uh, caught a lot of fish at the end. Jesus said, can I make use of your boat? Oh, sure. In the mind of Peter, what, 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 what is the boat uh, uh, good for me again? I didn't, I've used it uh, all night. It didn't work for me. You can, you can use that boat. And uh, Jesus stepped into the boat of Peter. And after preaching, as he was preaching, Jesus, Jesus did miracle. The whole fishes were coming to see Jesus. Because every living creature must bow at the name of Jesus. When they heard the voice of the Creator, they were coming closer. Where they were hiding, all of them came out. And when the time came, Jesus told Peter, you can put your net here. He said, you, can, you can imagine Peter. Uh, he knew where he could catch big, big fishes. And what would he find in the riverbank? But with faith, he just, just reluctantly. Uh, he put his net there, and he couldn't even drag the net out. He made it. He made it. That's the bottom line. Jesus made him to, to accomplish what he couldn't accomplish the whole night. 
I pray at this hour, Lord, that you stretch out the same hand upon your people, what they have not achieved for many years, what they have not accomplished for many years. Abba, Father, at this hour, they are praying that you will bless their job, bless their plan, bless their plan, bless all their endeavor. Let there be open door for them to be able to accomplish what they have been planning for many years in the mighty name of Jesus. May you be accomplished in the mighty name of Jesus. You have been planning many projects, many projects, both home and abroad, and it has been, hasn't been successful. Abba, Father, I pray at this hour that your children will be successful, that they shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, say amen, child of God. Claim Peter's blessing tonight. Sometimes you think you can't even make it. You cannot make it. But by the grace of God, you will make it in the mighty name of Jesus. And that will bring us to the, uh, the reflection of tonight, Isaiah chapter 60. And it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, shine. It's not enough just to rise up. It's not just enough to get up from your seat. It's not just enough to get up from your house. But wear bright face. Have strong hope that you shall shine in your job. That you shall shine in your business. Arise, not wearing gloomy face, not reluctantly. Arise. Arise with vigor. You are, you, are, you are full of strength, child of God. Arise, because the Spirit of God is, is, is energizing you, is empowering you. The Word of God is motivating you to rise. To rise, and not only rising, yet you shall shine. Why? Because the light of God has come to illumine your own light. It is in the light of God that we shall see light. With the light of God shining in your life, your own light shall be shining. It's just like a, a diamond. Uh, have you seen diamond rosary? You know, when you are in the, in the uh, outside, uh, under the sun or under the, the, the light, it will be shining. And when you switch off the light, Everything will be shining brighter and brighter. These are mysteries God surrounded us with. But this is what, I, what I'm trying to let you know. That even when darkness is around you, God will make you to shine in spite of the darkness around you. I'm just using some images to help you. Even when you think that there is darkness following you around, God will still make you to shine. God will still make light, the light of God to be in your life, in spite of the turbulence in your life. And then Isaiah 60, verse 1 continues, and the glory of the, of the Lord rises upon you. It's not human glory, the glory of God. You are maker. You are creator. It is the glory of God that will rise upon you. When Archangel Gabriel told Mother Mary that the Spirit of God will encapsulate your being, will overshadow you, and the child shall be called the man of God with us, she did not even know what was to come. After asking questions, he said, let it be done to me according to your word. When God is shining in you, you never remain the same. Verse 2 of Isaiah 60 says, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you, and, and, and his glory appears over you. Look at that. Verse 3, Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Look at that. That was the prophecy of Isaiah about Jesus. But by virtue of our baptism, we are co heirs in the Lord's vineyard. Because we are Christians, we are followers of Christ, we have been baptized in the Lord. And therefore, that blessing 
we shall also get. I will make you fishers of men. When God has empowered you, he fortify your banner. The source lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you, look at you. You used to beg, the people will come to you seeking for refuge. It's a blessing that is God that is that God is trying to give you through the sacred scripture. You used to beg, you used to look for help, but now you are the one helping people. You are now the breadwinner. How it happened, you do not know. But God will make it to happen if you have not gotten your blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Claim your blessing tonight, child of God. Verse 5 says, Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. Look at that. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. If you go to your internet, your business will be flourishing. If you go to your business at home, it will be flourishing. You will be hearing good news. And people will be looking for your goods. People will be looking for the commodities you have and that of your children and siblings in the mighty name of Jesus. This, this, this Isaiah 60 is a blessing for you. For God has a plan for each and every one of us. The sea says, herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of maiden and ephah, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold and incense, and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Kedah's long will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebuah will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings in the, uh, my altar, and I will adorn my a glorious uh, temple. Look at that. It's like with, with joy and happiness, you will give thanks to God in order. Because God has started blessing you. And you praise God and worship Him and offer sacrifice to the Lord in, in appreciation. And this is, says, who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves to their nest? Surely the, the islands look to me. In the lead are the ships of Tarshish, bringing your children from afar with their silver and gold. Look at that. You know, that was the prophecy of Isaiah about the coming of the Messiah. But I want you to claim this uh, passage of good things to come, good news to come. Uh, when my father was alive, sometimes when he starts scratching his palm, he would tell me, my son, I'm expecting money. And this love, behold, it works for him. Someone that would be owing him, uh, because he used to be a photographer and at the same time a lab technician. Uh, he using the photography as his hobby. And then somebody will knock at our door and bring him money for his passport and so on. And we laugh. We say, that because you scratch your palm, that, uh, that's why uh, money is coming. You know, we don't understand certain things, but that's, that works for him. But I'm just telling you in faith that when you look at the scripture and then the prophecies, coming from of old, it is still today happening in our life that the Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God never changes. He shall prosper us. Jeremiah 29, verse 11, he has a plan for us. And when the Lord has told uh, Abram, I, I, I will make you a great nation, Abram was still Abram, but eventually he became Abraham and waited for many years and he still made it. He had uh, his own son. And from one son, many children came. Sarah was laughing because she couldn't understand the, the ways of God. God's ways are not our ways. I don't blame Sarah for laughing. God waited all these years when she was a young girl. And she, didn't, she wasn't pregnant. And when they were in their, in their, in their later years, and then Sarah was laughing, how will I carry pregnancy? I don't blame her. But, you know, God's ways are not our ways. God wants to take glory at his own time. But we want it our own time. The more we keep pushing, God is still pushing his own agenda. We don't understand it. When you relax, yeah, God, God wants to surprise you. 
God wants to surprise you. Sometimes we don't like that kind, of, that kind of surprise. We want God to give it when we want it. And he will laugh at us. Sometimes God play with us like little children. No wonder why Jesus allowed you to said, allow you to come to me. But the kingdom of God is like it's for them. They have pure hearts. They have clean hearts. When a child needs ice cream, so mom, I, I need ice cream. And if it is there, you give it to him or her. If it is not there, okay. And they will go away. But they will continue to bother you till you get the ice cream. They keep knocking at the door of the Lord. Since he told us to come like little children, you come like little children to him and knock at his door. Surely the islands look to me and the lead are the ships of Tashis, bringing your children from afar with their silver and gold to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Look at that. For he has endowed you with splendor. Foreigners will rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you, in favor I will show you compassion. Look at that. God knows what he's doing with us. Sometimes he's angry with us, he chastises us. But he says, in favor I will show compassion. Look at that. That is uh, uh, Isaiah 60 verse 10. Though I was angry with you, I struck you, but in favor I will show compassion. And verse 11 says, your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day and night. Look at that. This is assurance. This is the divine prophecy. So that people may bring you the wealth of the nations and their kings led in triumphal uh, procession. For the nations or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. Look at that. When enemies come to destroy you, God fights for you. Why will God do that? Because he loves you. He loves us. He fights our battle. For the nations of the kingdom that will not serve you will perish. Look at that. The glory of Lebanon will come to you. The Jennifer, the Fir, and the Cypress together to adorn my sanctuary. And I will glorify the place for my feet. Look at that. The children of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet. And all will call you the city of God, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Look at that. God will make your enemies to bow before you. They, 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 they will bow before you. Sometimes we want our enemies to die, but God wants them to be alive so that they will experience and witness how God has blessed you. But sometimes we want them to die, 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 die. God, kill them, kill them. God laughs at us. He so said, my son, my daughter, I've heard you. But this is what I want. I want them to be alive and see how I will bless you. Some people will not like it. Some people will be afraid. But God is telling you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid they will do nothing to you. But because we are human, you will be afraid. Although you have been forsaken and hated, with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride, verse 15, and the joy of all generation. Look at that. Many people that despise you will look around and see that God has blessed you and your family. Look back and see where you were and then where you are now. God is blessing you one by one, child of God. Verse 16, you will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breast. And then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. You see, sometimes God becomes a nursing mother, feeding us with his breast. But now you have breast. You see, God is using every imagery to reassure us so that we shall not be afraid. We shall not be afraid. Even Isaiah 49 from verse 14 to 16 says, Even if a nursing mother forgets the children or forgets the child on her lap, even though a nursing mother forgets the child of her laps, 
God will not forget you. There is no forgetfulness in the Lord. There is no forgetfulness in the Lord. But sometimes we, we use human language to talk about God, our relationship with God. God has forgotten me. God has abandoned me. Oh, God, what is going on? Why? Where is people? Enemies are asking, where is my God? He is there with you. I'm just assuring you of the blessed assurance. I'm empowering you, child of God, that you will make it. Verse 17 says, instead of bronze, I will bring you gold and silver in place of iron. Look at that. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace you are governor, and well-being, you are ruler. Look at that. Verse 18, no longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. Say amen, children of the light. Say amen. Nobody likes violence. Nobody wants destruction. And when you hear this kind of prophecy, you claim it for your people. Claim it for your town and country. You say, Amen. No longer will violence be heard in your land. Amen. No ruin or destruction within your borders. Amen. But you will call your walls salvation and your gates praises. Look at that. Verse 19. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light. Look at that. He's trying to tell us that I I made the moon. I made the stars. All these things are the work of my hands. But I myself that made it will be your light. Uh, There was a place I went for prayer uh, after crusade. And then uh, I was going home. And then one of the women, uh, women said, oh, Father, do you still have holy water? I said, it has finished. Oh, oh, I missed your holy water. I said, okay, let me bless you. Uh, but I need holy water. I said, I'm the one that blesses holy water. Come. He said, oh, it's true, it's true. You see, our people need catechesis. You have to keep on teaching your people, teaching your children. Sometimes we have little faith. They feel that the, the holy water is stronger than the the word of God and the, and the power from the word of God. It is the power, it is the word of God that God empowered in the priest that makes water, that makes the wine to be blood and then the, 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 the wafer to become the blood, body of Jesus Christ during consecration. That's why every priest will not just cause in anger. You hold your peace. Every intercessor should not cause in anger. You hold your peace. Every parent will not cause in anger. Hold your peace. You don't talk to your children anyhow because of your position in your family. Don't cause your children. Don't cause your siblings in anger. I know you are human. You can look at them and then you just quietly leave and pray for them. Sometimes they make you angry. Instead of cursing someone, bless someone. The Lord will bless someone tonight. My Lord will bless someone tonight. Oh. My Lord will bless someone tonight. My Lord will bless someone tonight. It may be you. It may be I, it may be someone in your family. It may be you, it may be her. The Lord will bless someone tonight. Yes, bless bankers. I will make peace your governor and well-being your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Look at that. The sun will no longer be your light 
by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will win no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Say amen, child of God. Isaiah 60 verse 20. He shouted blessing upon you. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will win no more. Because sometimes you'll be waiting for the moon to come out. It doesn't come out. But he's saying the Lord will be your everlasting light. When the Lord becomes your everlasting light, what again are you looking for? What kind of electricity are you looking for? The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Look at that. Verse 21. Then all your people will be righteous and they will possess the land forever. Look at that. When everybody in your country becomes righteous, there will be no more war. Uh, no more war. Everybody will live in peace. This is the prophecy of Isaiah about the coming of the Messiah. And also it's about our parousia, the end time. In heaven there is no catastrophe. In heaven, there is no sickness. You've never heard that angels came down from heaven for checkup. No. It is only in the world that you marry and make merry. But in heaven, no marriage, no marriage. So God is walking with you, child of God. God is at peace with you. And uh, in verse 22 of Isaiah, it says, the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In each time, I will do this swiftly. Look at that. He does not waste time to bless you, child of God. He doesn't waste time. But sometimes you think that you're, he's wasting time. But a thousand years is like a sigh before the Lord. A thousand years is like a sigh. Look at what uh, Paul told the Galatians. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. Look at that. There is time for everything. There is time for everything. Book of Psalm 102 verse 13 says, You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to be glorious and gracious to her. For the appointed time has come. Look at that. Appointed time has come. Will you be able to wait for the appointed time? Book of Psalm 102 verse 13. The appointed time has come. When the time comes, nobody can stop your goodness. Nobody can stop the blessing God is about to shower on you. Because the appointed time has come. When the Jews they were trying to destroy Jesus, they couldn't get him. But when the time came, he said, I am the one. The hour has come. Even the apostles that were sleeping, he said, go back to sleep. The, the hour has come. When the time comes for, the, for a pregnant mother to give birth, nothing stops. She must deliver. God is with you. And when God is with you, he, he knows how to fight your battle. That's why you have, to, you have to be with the Lord all the time. Pray in season and out of season. Book of Psalm 119, verse 126 says, It is time for the Lord to act, for they have broken your law. When people are pursuing you, just knock at the door of the Lord. It's time for you to fight my battle. And the book of Psalm 69, verse 13 says, But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O God, in the greatness of your loving kindness. Answer me with your saving truth. Look at that. Nothing stops your blessing, child of God. Nothing stops your blessing. Isaiah 49, verse 8 says, Thus says the Lord, in a favorable time, 
I have answered you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. And I will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people to restore the land, to make them inherit the desolate heritage. God is fighting your battle. And when you, God is in your camp, nothing will spoil. All you have to do is to wait for an acceptable time. Even Paul was, uh, was teaching it to the Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 said, At the acceptable, acceptable time, I listened to you. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is acceptable time. The, the message from the scripture is still the same. It's the same. There was a young girl, uh, Brother Walker knew about this guy. I told him. She had brain, brain tumor uh, because she didn't know that uh, it was what was bl uh, blocking, uh, making her vision to be blurred. And the doctor books up for uh, 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 x ray and everything, MRI, and they found out that there was a tumor, a growing tumor in, in, inside the brain. And the child was so afraid. Very beautiful girl. Very athletic. She used to play basketball. She used to run. And everything just came to a stop. She cried. And the mother called me on the phone. I told Brother Walker to keep her in prayer too. Because we are two or three. I gathered in my name here. Then. I, was, I was awake. Uh, throughout the whole operation, that very nice for the child. I was just doing my divine mercy. And the mother will call. They have finished the first surgery in the morning. Oh, they are going back to the, for the second time. Oh, there was something that was missing. Oh, they are going back. She wasn't uh, doing well. Oh, they are going back early in the morning. I say, calm down. That I prayed with your daughter. I prayed with your daughter. She, I told her, Tell me what you are so what what you you really want from God. You say I don't want to be a a, a, a vegetable. I I don't want to lose my brain. I I want to be uh, using my eyes to see. I say Is that what you want to say. Yes, yeah. I prayed for her. I say all these things God will grant you, and 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 I prepared her for the surgery. She went for the surgery. This is three years now. Now she's back to school. But what happened? Because of the, the, the trauma in the head and, the, and the, what the doctors told them, that it might affect her movement, her legs, and so on. Even the, 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 the mouth shifted. And they did surgery and brought back the, 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 the mouth back. It was like a mini stroke, a, a young girl of 17 that time. You see, sometimes uh, you don't budget for anything and then uh, challenge just come. But in spite of the fact that she was having this situation, she was taking her exams after surgery. Her brain was intact. She did not lose her vision. She did not lose her sight. Sometimes she cries and says, Father, why? I'm no longer walking. I'm in the wheelchair. I say my my daughter, I don't know why. We keep on presenting it before the Lord. But what you asked me to request from God, I did. You told me you don't want to lose your brain. Your brain is intact. You argue, you ask questions, and everything is intact. And she started laughing. I put a smile on her face. I brought hope to her. I said, you are using your eyes. I said, mm-hmm. And she has something to hold on to while she's going to therapy and learning how to walk again. Though it's wobbling. But she's still on the wheelchair. But she always tells me there is hope. She used to, she used to feed uh, through the stomach instead of eating with the, with, the, with the mouth. And everything gradually comes back to normal. She's not eating with her, her, her own mouth. I said, what happened to you was not something that was Simple. You keep on 
keep on reassuring children of the light that there is hope. There is hope. You will make it. You will make it. And today, she is, she, she's back to school since last two years. What I'm trying to tell you is that when you have God in your life, no matter what you are going through, you have strong faith. And then your hope will not be hopeless. And life will not be meaningless for you. But when there is no hope, then life becomes hopeless for you. And life becomes meaningless. So when children of God, when you are with people around you that are in despondency, reassure them of divine blessing and mercy. We keep on supporting one another. Support one another in prayer. Support one another in faith. Support one another in your family. Not every time you pray for doom, doom. When, when the enemies are fighting you, present their names before the Lord. And God knows how to fight them even better than you can fight them. When things are happening to you, be it sickness. It's not easy what I'm telling you. Nobody wants to be sick. Nobody wants disappointment in life. You're going through divorce. Your children are suffering. You are losing your job. Just tell yourself, I'm going to make it, even in spite of this divorce, even in spite of the losing job, in spite of my not passing my exams, I'm going to make it. You will survive. Keep reassuring yourself that you will not give up. Don't give up. You will make it in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep fighting. Pray that the Lord will continue to rekindle the fire of success in you. You're going to make it, child of God. You're going to make it. Let's go into prayer. Take in deep breath and breathe, child of God. Jesus is all I have. He will set me free. Jesus is all I have. He will set me free. Nani gibo chinwe. Iga zapota mo. Nani gibo chinwe. Biko zapota mo. Oli la nande so. Eza ne beselago. Nanegi kana kasalam bamo, di kuno zano nebere. Ine makani sinachiku, oh ina mami wata, oh ina kando boli, oh bona kachiku, di kuno zaba zabano 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 mabio. Zabanagi na hache kul na gyo, diko na gozo mozi. I will survive. I say you will survive. In Jesus' name, I say you will survive. You will survive. In Jesus' name, you will survive. Child of God, your hour has come. You will make it in Jesus' name. You will make it in your business. You will make it in your health. Even that sickness will not end in death. In the mighty name of Jesus, when God has not said death, death will not come to you. I bless you, Gospel of God, John chapter 10, verse 10, that God has come to liberate you. You will have life, not sickness. You will have life, not death. You will have life and have it in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I thank you for tonight. I pray that you heal every disease, heal diabetes patients, heal them from their diabetic complications, heal the people that are having high blood pressure, heal the cancer people, 
Oh, Father, I pray that whatever that is troubling your children, that you free them from that captivity. So many people have COPD that are struggling to breathe. Abba, Father, I pray that you breathe the breath of life in them, that you will normalize their breath in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, I pray for autistic children. It's not easy for their families. It's not easy. It's double cross. But I know that you, my Lord, will continue to carry their burden in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, visit your children one by one. You know what they are going through one by one. I pray that you deliver them from these evil forces around them. Let them breathe life. Let them breathe life in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am now blessing your salt and water. Father, Lord, I thank you for blessing us with water. I thank you for giving us the gift of salt. You said that you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. I pray that at this hour you bless the salt. You bless the waters, no longer be ordinary salt, no longer be ordinary water. I exercise you, living water. I exercise you with the salt that you no longer be ordinary salt, no longer be ordinary water. Let it be filled with the divine efficacy and sacramental grace that will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That wherever you are sprinkled after this year, blessing, that you will be able to fire evil forces around them. Now purify and sanctify the land. Purify and sanctify that family. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open your palms. Father, I thank you for tonight. You have blessed our destiny. I pray that you bless our stars, bless our destiny. Father, the, the work of your hand will be shining in your, in your children. Whatever that place their hands on, oh Father, let it be blessing upon blessing. May you bless the, 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 the work of their hands. May you bless their destiny. Their, your children will shine and brighten their star. Oh, God of love, bless their destiny. 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 Abba Father, we are knocking at your door. We are knocking with prayer. Oh God of love, bless your destiny. Abba Father, we thank you. We thank you for tonight. No matter what your people are going through in their business, both home and abroad, nobody will take away their destiny. Nobody will take away their star. Father, continue to bless them. I pray tonight that you continue to anoint them with the oil of gladness, that they will shine and prosper. Bless their posterity in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, use your your hand to to uh, take salt and put in the water. May the mixture of salt and water be made in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and glory, and yours forever and ever. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you for this blessing. The mixture of salt and water is made in your name. As we are carrying it in faith, Father, it is filled with your sacramental grace. Let this spiritual synergy you have, uh, you have empowered upon this water and salt accomplish the work of your hand in their families. When they sprinkle it and ask for peace, let there be peace in that family. When they are sprinkling it and then and showering peace, Pray prayer upon their family, both home and abroad. Father, arrest the situation for, for, for good in the mighty name of Jesus. If the evil people can stay where they are and call the name of your children and certain things they believe happen, at the same time, at this hour, we are liberating them from this captivity. Any libation or incantation against your people, Father, I dissolve it and I crush it and I annihilate it in the mighty name of Jesus. When they sprinkle this water, 
in prayer and with faith, it will repel and rebuke all evil or evil forces. Wherever they have gathered, scatter them, crush them, and let them in the mighty name of Jesus. If there is any intent or evil intent against your people, if there is any monetary spirit, any attack of the wicked, that evil ghost that is coming against your children, both when and abroad, I say, get away from that family. Get away from that body. That body belongs to the Holy Spirit. It's not you. It doesn't belong to you. Father, I pray and I repel and I rebuke all of the evil forces against your children in that family. Whatever be the monetary spirit that has been moving around them, I crush it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you find a hidden battle for your children in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing your oil. Abba, Father, I thank you for giving us the gift of oil. I thank you, Father. For even Jeremiah said, is there no ban in Gilead? And my children wounds are no longer healed. I pray that your anointing will bless this oil, that you no longer the ordinary oil, be filled with your divine efficacy, that you will grant them divine grace and blessing, that grace of God will shine upon this oil. And when they rub it upon their body, Father, all the ailments will be aware. Just like David, sometimes when he was in the forest and the animals are crying, Animals were crying and they're restless. You put oil on their body and they'll be able to sleep. In the same way, Father, when your children are restless and they're burdened and the doctors don't know what's going on in their body, doctors cannot even detect what's going on in their body. Father, when they put this oil upon their body, Father, restore situation. Heal them, heal them, heal them. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing your Bible. Father, it is your word that is in the scripture. I pray that you bless the Bibles, you know, the scripture online. I pray that you bless and bless and bless them. When they use your word to, to repel and rebook all evil forces, Father, answer, your prayer, answer their prayers. You say, I know my sheep, my sheep knows me. They hear your voice and you hear their voice. When they, when they invoke your name, uh, in their fight against prescription and powers, Father, I pray that you answer them. May you continue to make their Bible to be holy so as to be able to be powerful when they are rebuking and repelling the devil, prescription and powers, uh, which is a wizard, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing your altar. Abba, Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to have a chapel in our places, an altar of prayer. You know, when you when you meet your people in the Old Testament, they always pitch their tent and they mark it as a covenant with you and a treaty for you. We, I pray that you bless all our altar, bless the candles on the altar. When they lift the candle to prayer, let the candle on the altar that serves as the light of God continue to shine. And as it melts, melt away their problem, melt away their sorrow. Let away the situation in their family that is not favorable to them. May the light of God shine in their family. May the light of grace and peace shine. May the light of love come in. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all the incense for prayer. Father, I pray that you bless the incense your children use for prayer. That it repel all evil spirits. I pray that you repel all marine spirits, all the witches and wizards, wherever they are coming from. Scatter them, crush them. May they run away from that place. From that place. It doesn't belong to them. That house does not belong to them. That house is a house of prayer. May you accept their incense and at the same time repel evil forces in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing your scapula, your medal, your chaplet, your, your crucifix, your finger rosary, all of them. Father, all articles of prayer, the sacramentals, Father, you know all of them. They are, are the, the status of Archangel Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, all the status of our mother Mary, our heart of Jesus, the of Mary, their pictures, Father, all the saints, St. Teresa, St. Anthony, all the saints. All the precious Lord, their pictures, all of them, their booklets and pamphlets of divine mercy. Father, you know all of them. I thank you for giving your children the opportunity to call your name. And they have been doing it devoutly. I pray that you bless all their sacramentals, their pamphlets, their booklets of prayer. 
make it to continue to be effective. When the evil spirits come, they will not see them. Father, put confusion in the camp of the enemy. When your children are praying and when they are sleeping, put confusion in the camp of the enemy. I cover my, my children with the huge of divine protection at this hour. And when they wear the scapula, they wear the dress of my mother Mary for intercession and protection. In Luke, Gospel of Luke chapter 148, our mother Mary said that all the nations shall come in life. When we are saying the words of this, we are, we, are, we, are being, we are receiving divine favor through the intercession of our mother Mary. Oh, mother Mary, intercede for your children. I pray for the powerful intercession as you did in Cana, and in Galilee. Intercede for your children for your favor. For divine favor, let the favor of God favor them one by one. I pray for intercession of the the intercessors too. All the people that are requested for their prayers, when they are praying, Father, answer their prayers one by one. Loving Father, without you we can do nothing. I pray that all these articles of prayer will be empowered to repel and rebuke all evil forces. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm praying for all the, the 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 sick people. Loving Father, I thank you. You love the sick, and you know how best to bless them. When the Peter's in law was sick, you were able to reach out and heal the Peter's in law. In the same way, Father, we pray for all the sick patients in this line that you deliver them one by one, heal them one by one, bless them one by one. We assure them of divine healing. Let your healing and anointing continue to anoint them, O oh Father. We assure them of hope. They shall continue to be alive. They will not die, they shall live. I bless you with Psalm 118. You shall not die, you shall live to recount the goodness of the Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all your medications. Father, you are the root of death, O oh Jesus. Everything from the root hands, you know. I pray that you bless all their tablets, their liquid ones, their oil, the oil ones. Father, I pray that you bless them. It will no longer be ordinary tablets. It will be filled with their healing. Whatever that uh, the doctor said that that medication would, would work, that's what it will work in their body. The diabetic patients, they, 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 they depend on you on, on this medication and all the people that are suffering from high blood pressure, low blood pressure, they depend on their medication to survive. I pray that you, my God, will f- remove all side effects from all these medications in the mighty name of Jesus. So many people are tired of taking their medication. So many of them are living in faith. But they are no longer taking their medication. Bless whatever they are eating or drinking that sustains them. Free them from that diabetes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be no complication in the mighty name of Jesus. And regulate their, 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 their blood pressure. Regulate their sugar level, O oh, Father. Let it be normal in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, many of your children are in pain. I pray that you, for all the people that are having migraine, pain, pain, pain all over, I pray for healing. Let their try to stay away. Free them from arthritis, but fingers and toes and all the wobbly legs be strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba Father, take control in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm blessing all your children and your household. Father, I thank you for giving us children. May they never face any cyberbully peer pressure. I pray that you restore and arrest the situation in many families, especially teenagers that are coming to the adults. Some of them lose control in many families and they're struggling and they're fighting their parents. Father, I pray that there will be stability in their family in the mighty name of Jesus. May they remain focused and know that there is time for everything. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Father, I thank you for blessing our family and blessing your houses one by one and blessing the cars and the buses you are using to go to work the train, some people walk. I bless all of you. I bless your legs. I bless the cars. I bless the buses. I bless the train that you used to go to work. You will not see evil people. Evil people will not see you. You will not jam evil people. Evil people will not jam you. You will go safely and you come back safely. When you are driving, the God of mortals will not touch you in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, I pray and I cover all our children on this line. 
that there will be stable in the offices. There will be no center attack. There will be no incident reports. In the mighty name of Jesus, Abba Father, have your way. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I'm blessing their houses one by one. Their house shall be house of prayer. Blessed from foundation to the rooftop, O oh Father. I pray that whenever they, whenever they come home, let it be house of rest, house of peace. When they sleep, they will rise in the mighty name of Jesus. Never allow them to, to go away either by, by invocation from the evil camp in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your angels be on guard. They will sleep and wake up full of life in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.